Hi there, it's Oscar here. I want to welcome you to another tutorial video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you five tips from the Illustrator Layers panel. It's my goal that by the end of this video, you should become something of an Illustrator Layers panel ninja, or at the very least, help you work more efficiently in Illustrator. Over the course of this video, you'll hear me refer to layers and objects. So, to clear up any confusion, whenever I mention layers, I'm referring to these containers that hold the shapes and objects that you draw on the artboard. Objects, on the other hand, refer to the actual physical shapes and paths that you draw on the artboard. You can think of layers as these transparent folders that hold everything that exists in the document. In Illustrator, no object can exist outside of a layer. Layers are useful for organizational purposes and appearance effects, as I'll demonstrate in this video. Template layers. Template layers are especially useful when you need to draw over an image or pre-existing artwork. Imagine we need to use this image as a reference for a vector artwork. Presently, it's not very convenient for use as a reference because it could easily be moved out of place. Sure, you could lock the image in the layers panel and get on with your business, but there's a more excellent way. First, make sure the photo is the only object in the current layer. This is because turning the layer into a template will affect all objects within that layer. Now, double click on the corresponding layer to open the layer dialog box. Be careful not to double click on the layer name as that will just let you rename the layer. Here we have the option to change the layer name and set the selection indicator color, but we're more interested in the settings below. So click on the template checkbox to make the layer a template. Immediately two things happen. Some of the other options get grayed out, but they are also automatically set in a specific way as to produce the template effect. Now keep in mind though that the fact that these options are grayed out and inaccessible doesn't mean they are inactive. In fact, we could get the same effect if we unchecked the template option but set the other options the exact same way. So it's more of a shortcut to speed up your workflow. I'll just activate template and leave everything else as is, then click OK. The resulting effect is a locked semi-transparent image. If you need to draw, you'll have to create a new layer above the template layer. Now it's easy for you to draw over the background reference photo. You can also hide or show the template layer according to your convenience. So, the next time you need to use a photo reference, consider using templates. Locate object. Sometimes, when working with documents in Illustrator, maybe a stock vector artwork you downloaded, you may have to deal with tons of objects within a document, often numbering in the hundreds. It can become a hassle scrolling back and forth to locate a selected object in the layers panel. This is where the Locate Object button comes in. I'll demonstrate how it works. Here, I have an artwork on the artboard consisting of a good number of objects. I'll choose the Group Selection tool. Not the Direct Selection tool, but the Group Selection tool. This tool is useful here because it allows you to select individual shapes, regardless of whether they belong in a group clipping mask or compound path. I find that I use it quite often, so I have it mapped to Shift A on my keyboard. I'll go on and select a random obscure object. Then below the layers panel, click the locate object button. It should take you to the exact location of the object in the layer hierarchy. I'll try it again with another object. This is useful for organizational purposes. 
Plus, you get to make the world a better place with the milliseconds you save. Selection Indicators Still on the subject of layer organization, a typical use case could be when you need to quickly organize objects into specific layers. This tip can help speed up the process. For this, we'll be taking advantage of selection indicators. Imagine I want to separate the main elements of this artwork into individual layers instead of just layer 1. I'll begin by selecting this guy here with his speech bubble. Again, I'll use the group selection tool to make a clean selection. Deselect all extras. Then in the layers panel, you can see these colored indicators displayed on the items listed in the layers panel. They also correspond to the color of the borders of the selected object. These colored squares act like breadcrumbs showing which layer or group holds the selected object. The obvious problem here is that the components that make up this selection are scattered across various groups. It will be time consuming to have to sort through and move them one after the other. This is where we can use the selection indicators. First, I'll collapse this layer, then create a new layer and call it guy1. Now, instead of sorting through, just click and drag the indicator into the new layer. Be careful not to click on the indicator because that will just select all objects in the layer. As you see, the object selection color changes to orange, matching that of the new layer. You can also see that all the selected objects have been moved into the new layer and we have a neat organization. Clearly, this is a more efficient way to move selected objects between layers. Clipping masks. Clipping masks allow you to limit the visibility of an object to the boundaries of another mask object. For example, I could put this jellyfish thing in a clipping mask by drawing a circle over it. The important thing is that the mask object is placed above the main object. An easy way to recall this logic is to remember that you don't place your face on a mask, you place a mask on your face. We can also see that in the layers panel, it stores the object and its mask in a clipping group so that anything else you drop into the clipping group gets clipped. That being said, it's also possible to apply the clipping effect on the layer level. So it's not just limited to a single object or group of objects, but everything within the layer. This can be useful when you need to ensure that parts of your artwork don't spill out of the artboard as we see currently. To apply this mask, first we'll draw a rectangle the size of the artboard. Of course, you could use any other shape you want, but for this example, I'll use a rectangle, then size it to the exact dimensions of the artboard. Next, you need to ensure that the rectangle is the topmost object in the layer hierarchy. Then in the layers panel, click to select the parent layer. In this case, layer 1. Very important because down below, the make or release clipping mask button is available only when a layer is selected. Now click on the button. You can see that the visibility of every object within layer 1 is limited to the boundaries of the mask. You can go ahead and lock the shape in place so you don't accidentally move it out of position. So essentially, when you click on the button to make or release clipping mask, Illustrator looks at the selected layer and clips it to the boundaries of the first object it encounters in the hierarchy. Now you can go ahead and create other shapes even above the boundary object and the clipping mask will still hold as long as the shape is in layer 1. If you need to create other shapes outside the influence of the mask, simply create a new layer and store them there. You can always remove the clipping mask by clicking the button again. For more information about clipping masks, I made a video tutorial exclusively on the subject. 
you can find it linked in the description below and somewhere above. Appearance effects. Appearance effects include things like fill color, stroke, blend modes and any other effects you can find in the effects menu. For any shape to be visible in Illustrator, it needs to possess appearance properties. To demonstrate this, I'll activate the appearance panel. If you don't already have that panel, you can find it under Window Appearance. Now I'll draw a square and in the appearance panel, you can see the physical components that make up the object, the stroke and fill. The square is practically invisible without any of the appearance effects. Depending on your use case, you can add another fill or stroke. In this case, I'll add another fill, then give it a pattern. You also have access to the blending mode and opacity of each fill or stroke. And so the rabbit hole goes deeper. I'll go into the effect menu and apply an effect. For the sake of this demonstration, I'll apply the roughen effect. You can see it listed in the appearance panel. You're also able to hide or show the effect or move it around in the hierarchy to get different results. And if you want, go back in and edit the effect to your liking. There's no limit to what you can do. Now, I'll even move it into the object stroke, so only the stroke is affected by the roughen effect and we get this really cool mix between clean geometric and organic shapes. If you're not already mind blown, let's take it up a notch. Appearance effects are not just limited to objects, they can also be applied on the layer level. That way, every object within the layer will inherit the appearance properties of the parent layer regardless of their individual properties. To do that, create a new layer and draw a random shape. This will be for preview purposes. Then in the layers panel, click on the empty round circle just beside the selection indicator belonging to the parent layer. This will target the appearance properties of the parent layer. You'll notice that some of the other circles are filled, showing that these other objects contain special effects. But back to our layer now, we'll add the roughen effect from the effects menu under distort and transform. I'll tweak it a bit. Then click OK. Now you see the effect is active on the star shape. At first sight, this may seem like the usual result to be expected, but look what happens when we draw some new shapes onto this layer. They all inherit the appearance properties of the apparent layer. But if you move the objects into another layer, they lose the effects of the parent layer. The advantage of using this approach to apply effects to multiple layers is that it is non-destructive, flexible, and even more importantly, it is lighter on system resources because your computer only has to calculate the effects once and they get applied onto as many objects as you like without the added load. So for example, when you draw a circle in this layer, Illustrator only sees a circle made up of four vertices, even though the appearance shows different. How cool is that? So that was five tips from the Illustrator layers panel. If you have any questions or learn something new, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, try something new every day. Thanks for watching.